Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at deflation and understanding the impact of deflation on the economy. And we're also going to make sure we make a distinction between what deflation is and disinflation is. So take a look at the next slide. Definition. Deflation is defined as a persistent fall in the average level of prices in the economy. Okay. And that, so that means that prices are going down persistently as a result of something. Well, if you think about a simple aggregate supply, aggregate demand curve, there's really only two ways that prices can fall. Either the aggregate supply curve is going to shift outward, right? Or the aggregate demand curve is going to shift inward. So you should start seeing these stories in graphs. As soon as you think about prices going down and you know that deflation is a persistent fall in the average price level, then you know that either aggregate supply is going to go out, right? Or the aggregate demand is going to come in because that's the only way you can result in a fall of price levels, okay? Average price levels. So there are two broad explanations for a fall in the price level, and economists have used, two ca have used these two categories, good inflation and, quote, bad inflation. Well, let's start with good inflation. Okay. Good inflation comes about from improvements in the supply side of the economy and or in productivity, a simple aggregate demand and supply diagram will illustrate that in an increase in the long-run aggregate supply curve can result in an increase in real output and a fall in the price level, right? So let's take a look at this. this is like a neoclassical view of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. We have a long-run aggregate supply curve, right? We have the short-run aggregate supply curve here, AS1, and we have the aggregate demand curve here. Now, two things could happen, and usually when we're talking about deflation, we're talking about an improvement in the long-run aggregate supply curve shifting outward, and of course, that's going to result, right, that's number one, that's going to result in a lower price level. As soon as the long-run aggregate supply curve shifts out, guess what? The short-run aggregate supply curve is going to shift out as well. So you have a new price level and quantity equilibrium where the price level is lower, but the out, but the outcome is that more things are being produced um, in society. And as a result of that, it's going to be good, right? If the level of output increases, then we could assume that there is a lower level of unemployment, right? Unemployment is, is down and more workers will be needed to produce to the, the higher level of output. So this is good for the economy. Prices are down and it is deflation and it has, can have some negative context or negative uh, impacts. But really, this is an improvement in things. So this is a good deflation or supply side view of deflation. Now, let's look at its friend, the bad inflation. Here you go. You know what's going to happen. Aggregate demand is going to go in. Here we go. So bad deflation is demand side deflation, right? And it finds its source on the demand side of the economy. So another simple aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram will illustrate that falling demand, look, demand went from 81 in here to 82 will illustrate that the, a decrease in the price level will result as a, as a drop, as, there, as there's less things demanded in the, in the marketplace, we're going to have a new price level, which is lower, deflation. And of course, we are going to have a drop, therefore, in total output. And anytime we have a drop in total output from long-run aggregate supply curve, we know that we are experiencing higher levels of unemployment. Undoubtedly, this will be a time of recession, right? So... If output decreases on, on, on this side, right, then unemployment will rise and firms will need fewer workers if there's less demand. All right, but because both causes of deflation result in a fall of price level, we might say the first is positive, of course, good, right, and the second is negative because it results in a fall in real output and a rise in uh, unemployment, okay? So those are the two kinds of deflation. Get them in your brains. You know falling prices can only be accomplished by two things. Shifting the long-run aggregate supply curve out, which will result in a decrease in average price levels, or shifting the aggregate demand curve in. Pretty straightforward, but you can get it confused really fast. But if you start layering it in in really simple ways, you should be able to come up with uh, a good, confident view of what's happening down, what's happening. Now, what are the costs of deflation? So you might think, right, that consumers would be pleased for falling prices. But a significant number of problems can be associated with a fall in the price level. 
In fact, our economists argue that the cost of deflation are greater than inflation. So what does that mean? Well, unemployment is the biggest problem associated with deflation, right? If aggregate demand is low, then businesses will likely lay off workers. And anytime workers are laid off, of course, workers are consumers, what's going to happen? People are going to buy less. Why? Because they have less money <laughs> to spend, less discretionary income. And as a result, they might defer consumption, which is an economic term, but that will further reduce aggregate demand. And then if households become pessimistic about the economic future, then consumer confidence will fall. Oh, my goodness. And lower consumer confidence is likely to further depress aggregate demand. And then you can have, right, a deflationary spiral where the prices just keep dropping and dropping and dropping. So unemployment is a huge cost to deflation. A second big cost of deflation is an effect on investments. When there is deflation, businesses make less profit or make losses. And when businesses make less profit or have losses, what do they do? They fire workers. And anytime there is increased unemployment, then there is going to be decreased demand. And anytime that prices are going down and there's less profit, you get shaky confidence in the business sector or low business confidence. And that is likely to reduce investment further which would re which this has ne negative impacts, of course, in the future of the economy. So, unemployment, effect on investment. La last cost of deflation is the cost to debtors. And anyone who has taken a loan suffers as a result of deflation because the value of their debt actually rises as a result of deflation because the relative value of their debt goes up as prices go down. So if profits are low, this may make it too difficult for businesses to pay back their loans, and there may be bankruptcies, and anytime there's bankruptcies, you have <laughs> people getting really shaky in the economy because they're really worried about spending, th spending their money that they have now, so they defer their consumption, and what happens again? A fall in aggregate demand, which leads to more deflation. All right, so that is the classic deflationary spiral. Japan suffered from this and just kind of emerging from it even. Um, it has really costly effects on, on society. It's very difficult for the government to manage because a lot of it is psychological business confidence. What's that? Psycholo psychology. It's real, but it's basically just confidence in the business world, and that affects consumer confidence. And all of those things affect consumption and those two things, and investment, and those two things, of course, will reduce aggregate demand and prices go down further. All right, last little thing to take a look at in this is something called disinflation. Sounds all fancy, it's not. This is inflation, but means that the average level of prices rose, but at a lower rate than in the previous years. So in other words, prices are still rising. There's still inflation, but by a smaller amount. It's dist. It's disinflation. It's inflation that's going down. Okay, so don't confuse deflation with a rate, falling rate of inflation, which is referred to as disinflation. So deflation is actually a drop in prices, average price levels, from one year to the next. Disinflation is a drop in inflation. So if last year there was an inflation rate of 2%, and this year there is an inflation rate of 1.5%, guess what, folks? You have falling inflation, which economists call disinflation. Okay, very different from deflation, which is an actual drop in the average price level on all. So there's no rise. Even if 1.5 inflation being less than 2% inflation from the year before, you still have a 1.5% increase in the average price level, which is still inflation. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.